Hello, my name is Scott Weiner, aka Texas Stingray on DLA. I'm the creator of the Panther DMX Player. I'd like to welcome you to what I am hoping will be the first of many training videos on the Panther DMX Player. In these videos, you may hear me refer to the Panther DMX Player as the Panther. Just be aware that when I say Panther, I still mean the Panther DMX Player device. I'm putting together these videos in an effort to educate others on some of the things you can do by creating your own firmware and uploading it to the Panther. These videos will be technical in nature. If you have any questions, send me a message and I'll try to get you an answer. The agenda for these videos is as follows. I'll provide you with a little information about myself, the foundation of the Panther, we'll cover the pins on the microcontroller as to how they are related to the Panther, We'll cover the pins on the reserve header pin as to what pins are exposed on it and how they are mapped to the microcontroller. We'll cover the hardware and software requirements to create your own firmware to run on the Panther. And we'll finish with finally creating a simple program to flash the LEDs on the Panther. So a little bit about me. I got my bachelor's degree from the University of Central Oklahoma. I've been working in the information technology sector since 1990. I've been using several programming languages from C to Assembler to COBOL to uh, Java. So I've got quite a variety of programming languages. Um, I actually started working on hardware development in the fall of 2012, about a year after I started uh, into the animated lights at DLA. Um, Hobbies include spending time with my family, uh, hardware, software programming, and electronics. So, the Panther, what is it? It is a device that reads binary values from a sequence of files from an SD card. It then transmits those values over standard DMX signal to control other DMX devices such as lights, fog machines, any other type of DMX receiving device. How was it developed? It was developed from what I learned using an Arduino Uno and an Arduino Mega, items I purchased off eBay, as well as some snippets of code and libraries that I found on the web. Chip Pins The Panther is based on the Atmel AT Mega 328 chip. It is a 28 pin chip that has a total of 14 digital pins and 6 analog pins. Below is a list of the Arduino pin numbers and their current assignment on the Panther board. The Panther DMX player is an output device so there are two pins usually associated with input and output devices. They are D0 and D1 for the serial input and serial output. As it's only a serial output device the Panther does not use digital pin 0 and it's not available for you to use also. Digital pin 1 is the serial output device and can be used to send out DMX signal or other uh, signals. Digital pin 2 is available on the reserve header pin under pin 15. Digital pin 3 is the red stop LED. Digital pin 4 is the green status LED. Digital pins 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are all available on the reserve header pins as 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10 respectively. Digital pin 10, which is the chip select pin for the SD card, that is unavailable for use. The digital pin 11, which is the master out slave input, is used by the SD card and it's also available for use on the R3 of the reserve header pin should you have another device you want to hook up to it as well as the digital pin 12 which is the master in slave out and that's also used by the SD card on reserve header pin available for you on R5. Digital pin 13 which is the clock is also used by the SD card and it's available for use on the reserve header pin as R4. Analog 0 and analog 1 are available for you to use on the reserve header pin as R8 and R9. Analog 2, 3, 4, and 5 are available for you to use. They are on the trigger header pins. The board is labeled as 1, 2, 4, and 8 for trigger pins, for uh, analog pins 2, 3, 4, and 5 in that order. The Panther reserve header pins are mapped as follows. 
Pin 1 goes to ground. Pin 2 is positive 5 volts. Pin 3 is digital pin 11 in the Arduino IDE, also known as the master out slave in. Pin 4 is digital pin 13, which is the clock. Pin 5, digital pin 12, master in, slave out. Pin 6 is mapped to the reset pin on the chip. Pin 7 is equivalent to digital pin 9 in the IDE. Pin 8 is equivalent to the analog pin 0. Pin 9 is the analog pin 1. Pin 10 on the reserve header pin is not mapped to anything that is not used. Pin 11 is digital pin 8. Pin 12 is digital pin 7. Pin 13 on the reserve header pin is digital pin 6. 14 is digital pin 7, or excuse me, digital pin 5. 15 is digital pin 2. And pin 16 is not mapped. Hardware software requirements. The hardware requirements for the Panther is an Atmel programmer. I use a USB ASB programmer with a 10 pin to 6 pin adapter, and that's what I'll use in the videos. Software requirements you need a programming IDE. I use the Arduino IDE, and that's once again is what I will use in the video. The hardware and software links are also, also available on the Panther forum on www diylightanimation.com Once you have installed the Arduino IDE which includes AVRDude which is what we will use to upload the firmware which is the hex file to the Panther. You'll want to copy the below text into a file on your desktop. Name that file pantheruploadbat and edit that file to point to the location where you installed the Arduino IDE. Here's an example below of what you need to put in that file. Also note that the text below is wrapped onto two lines when it actually needs to be one line in the file. The text in the red color needs to be changed to point to your location of where you have the installed the Arduino IDE. I'll go ahead and try and put this also in the notes below so you can just copy it from there. Okay, so now we're ready to create our first program. We're going to be flashing the LEDs on the Panther. So we'll use the Arduino IDE to build and compile the hex file and then upload that to the Panther. So go ahead and launch the Arduino IDE at this point. Okay, so before we start programming, I wanted to show you the contents of my Panther upload.bat file. So basically, it's like at the PowerPoint, I've got this program, the AVR dude. You just need to make sure that you're pointing to the location where you installed your Arduino IDE at. Okay, so you'll use the Panther upload bat file to load up, for instance, a new version of the Panther DMX player firmware. If I push out a new firmware or to put the original back on there after you've been playing with it. If you're using the Arduino IDE, you can actually upload your sketches from here directly to the Panther. You do that by saying you upload using the programmer. Now you select the appropriate programmer by choosing tools programmer and choose the uh, USB ASB programmer. Another thing you want to make sure is that you come into program or excuse me file preferences and just make sure you have the the compilation check box here check so that whenever your program is compiling uh, you can see where it compiles your program to so you can copy your hex file out if you want to copy it. Okay so the first thing I like to do is I like to name my sketches when I start a new program. So I'm going to say file, save as, and save it on my D drive, Arduino, projects, and let's call this sketch, let's call it uh, Panther flash LEDs and we'll hit save there okay so now every sketch inside the Arduino IDE has to have at least two methods and those two methods are the setup method and the loop method or, and the loop method the setup method gets executed once every time the system reboots and it gets and the loop gets executed over and over again after the setup method so let's define those. Those are type void, meaning they're not going to return anything. 
and it's a set, uh, set up. Open, close parentheses, and then the squiggly brackets. And then the void loop. With the squiggly brackets, or excuse me, the parentheses and then the squiggly brackets. So that's that is at a minimum what you have to have in order to create a sketch that compiles and uploads it. So we could from here we can say just verify it. So here it uploads tells me where it saved my hex file to and the name of my hex file. See it's called Panther Flash LEDs dot CPP dot hex. So it's CPP for C. Alright, so I could upload that to the Panther. It won't do anything because I didn't tell the loop method to do anything. So let's go ahead and get our LEDs to flash. So what we're going to do is we want to create a couple of defines so that we can change our defined values without having to change our code. Plus it makes it a little cleaner for anybody else that wanted to look at our code and see what we're doing. So we'll define, and let's define a stop pin. And our stop pin is on digital pin 3 in the I, Arduino IDE and define our status pin and that is on digital pin 4. So now we need to tell the setup method what to do, how to initialate, initialize those pins, whether they're going to be an input pin, meaning we're going to read from them, or whether they're going to be a output pin, meaning we're going to write to it and we're going to be doing some writing to it to turn them on and off the LEDs. So we're going to set up, there's a method built into the IDE called pin mode and we pass in our pin, so we have, we have a stop pin and we're going to tell it it's an output and then we'll just copy and paste this and we have a status pin and that is an output pin as well. Okay, so down here in our loop method, we want to turn our LED on. So we're going to do a digital write, and we're going to write to our stop pin. And the value we're going to write is just called a high, which turns it on. And when our stop pin is on, we want our status pin to be off. So we'll do a digital right here. See now watch, you notice I spelled digital wrong. So if I fix it, and you see that the color changed, so this way it lets you know that, oh I know what that method is. And this time it's status pin. And we want to write it low. So whenever our stop pin's on, we want our status pin to be off. And then whenever we want, when our, down here, we're going to say when our status pin is high, so we'll turn that one high now, we'll want our stop pin to be low, so we'll change that to low. So I could leave this like this and compile it, but the problem is here is that you'll never see the uh, status pins and stop pins pause long enough so you can see that's actually on or off. So let's add a delay. So we'll do a delay here and we'll do 250 milliseconds which is a half a, a quarter of a second and we'll do a delay here for another 250 milliseconds, another quarter of a second. So that's all we have to have to toggle between our two status pins our, our two pins, the stop pin and the status pin. So when the stop pin's high, the status pin will be low. When the stop pin's low, the status pin will be high. Now we can compile it. We got no errors. And it tells us down here also the binary sketch file size is 1.100, one zero zero, excuse me, 1,100 bytes. And there's a maximum of this type of board, this type of, of a chip, the uh, AT Mega 328 of 32 megabytes, excuse me, 32,000 bytes of memory space for your program. This is this actually, actually program space. So we can actually compile, this is compiled, it tells us where it's at, 
So we could actually, once again, go out there, bring up Windows Explorer, drag and drop it onto here, or from the IDE, we can say upload using the programmer. So we're going to click on that. Now it's going to upload it pretty quick, and it's going to, once it uploads, it's going to immediately start executing it. So upload it. It's uploading, done uploading, and now it's executing my sketch on my uh, Panther. It's just toggling back and forth between my pins. So on the next um, video, I'm going to show you how to use the trigger pins that are built on the Panther, uh, and then we'll look at adding uh, some additional programs or videos after that to get you guys to do some more things like that. So if you like this, just let me know you like it. Uh, like it on uh, YouTube. Thanks a lot.